asymptomatic. That may be as many as 25%. That's important because now you have individuals that may not have any symptoms that can contribute to transmission, and we have learned that, in fact, they do contribute to transmission. So as many as 25 percent of Americans may be asymptomatic carriers. And new analysis suggests that you're more likely to die of COVID-19 than a stroke or a car accident at this point in the United States. So my next guest is an infectious disease specialist who spent years at the CDC investigating outbreaks. He says that we need a couple of big things right now, including, and this was just discussed at the briefing tonight, a federally mandated nationwide lockdown. And many people agree with that, including Bill Gates, who is outlining three things that he says we need to do to stop the spread. Here's what Bill Gates is suggesting today. He suggests a consistent nationwide shutdown. So that lines up with, uh, with what we're hearing. Massive testing and aggregating of those results so we can identify volunteers for clinical trials and a database approach to developing treatments and a vaccine. So a lot of that is being done, but the two big issues um, are one are in question. So in recent days, his Bill Gates' 2015, excuse me, TED Talk has gone viral. Maybe you have seen it. A lot of people are saying that what he said in 2015 about what would happen in the United States in a pandemic was an uncanny warning five years ago. Watch this. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. But we've actually invested very little in a system to stop an epidemic. We're not ready for the next epidemic. That was five years ago. Dr. Rishi Desai is an infectious disease specialist and chief medical officer at Osmosis. Doctor, thank you very much for being here tonight. Um, explain to everybody at home why you think a nationwide federally mandated shutdown is so important. Thanks for having me. So the first thing is that we know that this spreads person to person. You brought that up a few minutes ago. And that means that when we isolate ourselves in our homes, there is really no chance for that to spread beyond the household. So think of that as your unit. The problem right now is that it's all voluntary. You know, some states are doing it, other states are not. More and more states are doing it. But I'll tell you, I'm in Alameda County. We're the first county in the nation to do this lockdown. There are plenty of people still walking around outside and, and hanging out at the park and doing all this kind of stuff. It's all voluntary. And it, as long as it continues to be voluntary and not mandated, we're going to continue to see the cases rise. That's what people mean by flatten the curve. So you would shut down all air travel. We heard John Roberts, our reporter at the White House tonight, questioning the president about that, saying there's still a lot of planes going between hotspots. And, you know, the reaction was, you know, you can't completely shut down everything. The economy is in such tough shape, but it feels like we're almost all the way there, but not quite. Let me tell you something that you and your viewers might find inspiring, which is that if we did do this shutdown, if we shut down rail and, and airlines and did, did it the way I'm suggesting and really kind of policed it and had one squad car kind of driving around making sure everyone's in their homes, we would see a drop off in cases within two weeks. Within two weeks, the number of cases would start to fall and the entire country would breathe a sigh of relief. But we're not doing that. We're seeing the cases continue to rise exponentially, and we're all kind of panicking about the Dow Jones. But the truth is, if we just did this for a consistent period of time, for a couple of weeks, you'd see the number of cases fall off and continue to kind of go down. And so this is a two-week solution. We could do this. And you'd continue it after that, of course. You don't, want to, you don't want to put the pressure off the moment you've kind of started winning the fight. But we right. can do this, yeah. and it has to happen right away. You also recommend massive, large-scale testing. Now, what we hear every night is that the tests, that there are millions of tests available, and yet um, we're, we don't have that pinprink blood test that you can just sort of get, you know, at your local doctor and know in 15 minutes. But they're working yeah, great on question. it. Yeah, they're working on it. They should have been working on it for months. So the fact is we knew about this from the WHO when? December 31st, 2019. So last year, we knew about this. We knew coronavirus is coming. We knew it was a respiratory disease. We knew it was person to person. Why is it that it's this week that the FDA finally approved these kind of new Abbott lab testing, which, by the way, is one test at a time? 
It's a great test, but it's one test at a time. It's different than the labs that are doing mass testing, right? So this is a wonderful test, don't get me wrong, but it's one test per 15 minutes. That's wonderful, but it's not the same volume that you really need. This is better for kind of outpatient clinics and things like that. We needed this months ago. You look at Korea, Korea, South Korea and the US had their first official confirmed case on the same date, January 19th. So that means since January 19th, you look at what South Korea did and what we did, their population is one sixth of ours. Look at the cases they have, look at the mortality they have. It's a trifle compared to what we're dealing with right now because we've had a very weak response and they had a really strong response. Mm -hmm. Doctor, thank you. Very interesting to talk to you, Dr. Desai. Uh, hope you'll come back uh, as we move through this difficult sure. period in the country. Dr. Desai, thank you very much, sir.